What's up guys and welcome back to the podcast. My name is Robbie Cassidy and today we're going to discuss or we're going to talk through a couple of different ideas uh, and a couple of different strategies or tactics that you can use to help you manage your load while you're in season. Okay and now this applies to all sports um, so if there is if you have any questions on this podcast afterwards just make sure to send them my way um, and you can get in contact with me on Instagram at Mobility Shooter, or you can get in contact on TikTok as well. I've started TikTok recently. Um, and then the other one is just send me an email at mobilityshooter at gmail.com. So I think to, to jump into this one, because of the time of the year that it is, uh, it'd be a good idea just to talk a small bit about why it's important to manage load in season, um, as well as I want to look at, I think, simple things that everyone can apply as opposed to making the uh the bigger changes if we can if we can make if we can apply a lot of simple strategies uh and and employ some very easy habits we'll find that that can make a huge difference over the length of a season um and it is in when i'm recording this podcast it's the 20 what's it 24th of uh june 22 so uh with this it's basically coming into championship season in GAA um and I know with runners as well there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of races coming up uh, over the next couple of months just from the clients that I'm working with especially when it comes into September time so to jump into it what why do we need to manage load uh, in season and what does it even mean to to manage load so I think first off what we'll do is we'll we'll, we'll talk about what load is and like load itself is is I think we can look at it in a couple of different ways. So you can look at it like physical load. You can look at a cognitive load. Um, you can look at it in the way of spiritual load and emotional uh, load. Now, I talk about this in a lot of different podcasts, but it's basically what takes energy from your body. It's kind of the way I like to, to look at it because when we get it down to a very clear, like a very basic, very kind of a simple, uh, when we look at it like in a simple way, your body or your nervous system is working on healing or it's working on using energy okay and in general load is causing a lot of energy to be uh, used while your rest and recovering a rest and recovery time is when it's uh but we're using that energy to heal okay so when you take that into account and you look at what contributes to it then you can see that there is a lot more than just training load okay but for the basis of this podcast i'm going to talk mostly about training load okay and training training volume so other things that could contribute to load would be like as i was saying training volume you have work uh if you are if you've a busy job and you have a tight schedule and you're running from one thing to the next maybe it is that when you finish work you have to pick up the kids drop them to uh different classes that they may have um or different sports that they may have and then you're trying to fit in your time uh, during that I know this because a lot of the clients that I work with, um, our parents have kids. Uh, so what we're trying to do is we're trying to squeeze in their training in between the time sometimes that the, the kids are the kids are doing their own training. So they might drop them off to the football pitch, then they go for a run themselves. Okay, and they, and it's about managing that and making sure that we can keep on top of that. So they are they're not just adding extra time because you could sit in the car and you could wait for it or you could get out and you can do uh, a few things just to keep yourself active in that time uh, also. So I think that's a huge one, uh, and I think a lot of people miss out on that aspect of it. Um, and the more we practice it, the better uh, we'll get at it. We'll figure out different times that we can fit in little blocks of training here and there, okay? But to not go too far off uh, off course, I want to kind of come back to, to, to what contributes to it. So as I said, you have work, you have other commitments, you could have relationships, uh, and then on the other end, it could be emotional load where you are fighting with people or maybe there's somebody that you know that is sick, okay, where it's taking a lot of energy from you, uh, it's just that you're always kind of caring for them or you're, you're thinking about them um, and th- that takes a lot of your mind up. It could be that you have something uh, impending, so like you might have a, a deadline uh, that you need to get, I don't know, off the top of my head, a visa uh, sorted or you need to get um some type of a presentation due or you need to get your thesis in it's a big one that i come across as well okay so all these things will take energy from us 
they'll like they'll use the energy and we think of the body as a battery now i'm making this as simple as possible so that you can get an idea of the principles and then you can apply these principles to your own training in your own life okay so even though some of the examples may seem very simplistic in general they're very uh, applicable okay so yeah let, let's just say for example you have a thesis due at the end of the week okay you have a you're a GA player you have a game on the Sunday uh the week before let's say so we'll start from the the week before you have a game on a Sunday you have training on the Tuesday you have another training on the Thursday and then you have a game that weekend on the Saturday okay so that's not too bad you have a game Sunday training Tuesday training Thursday and then you have a game on a Saturday now in between that, what a lot of people will fit then is that they'll fit a gym session or two gym sessions in during the week. It really depends when you fit these in. Uh, so if that game is on the Saturday, you probably should be pulling it back a small bit. Okay, because what the reason that we're trying to manage load in season is that we want to make sure that you're able to perform for these games and we want to make sure that you're able to perform for competition and events. Okay, so it's really, it comes back to optimizing your recovery it comes back to uh mitigating fatigue and it's overall you're really looking to to optimize or improve performance as much as possible okay and then overall with that it also comes with a your a reduction in injury risk as well why because you're not as fatigued you're not under as much pressure your body isn't as under as much pressure it's getting time to recover after sessions that you do uh, and as a result, then you'll be fitter and stronger for the next game. And I think a lot of people forget about that is that they forget that, OK, well, I'm getting I, I'm getting a training session in to get a specific adaption. OK, I need to get the, for you to get that adaption. You need to give it time to recover. But what a lot of people do is they just think adaption, 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 and they never think recover. Uh, and as a result, then what will happen is you'll pick up small injuries. You could pick up in, bigger injuries. You'll, you can get sick um you can you get burnt out you get tired and fatigued rarely do people overtrain specifically like the actual uh the actual medical diagnosis of overtraining you'd want to be a professional athlete to do that nearly it's like training four hours a day idea it's kind of what overtraining is uh training for training for, for over four hours every day of the week with no recovery days so don't worry too much about that but there is a there is probably an under recovery aspect that a lot, a lot of people can struggle with um, in that they train a good bit, but then they don't recover enough. So their body just starts to break down. And as I was saying, the body is a battery. So it goes from 100% back down to 90%. Uh, and then that just keeps dropping 80, 70, 60. And then if you give it time to rest and recover, it comes back up to 80 or 90. It doesn't come back up straight to 100 straight away because you need to give it time. But it does slowly but surely climb up. Now, the good thing about the body is that there is a, there seems to be a very, it seems to be very effective at adapting and recovering to sessions that you do. Okay, so you don't need to put in, and this is general advice, you don't need to put in as many uh, recovery days as you do training days. Okay, so you can get away with training four or five days a week and resting two to three days a week. You can kind of have that balance as long as every couple of weeks then you deload and you focus on trying to get more uh, recovery days in that week and then you pull back and on the training that you're doing uh, and then you ease off at a small bit as well okay but in general the body is really really good at adapting so if you 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 kind of have that uh skewed maybe ratio is probably a better word you have kind of a better ratio towards before towards resting uh, and recovering you don't have to train for like let's say if, if it was if it was even you'd have to train for five days and you have to rest for five days but that's not the case at all. Um, the body is extremely good at adapting. And as long as you give it time to recover and you're taking your time and sleeping every night and then you're taking your two days off of that, then you'll find that it will cover from most things uh, and you'll be in a good position. And the thing is that we are training to get cardiovascular or to improve our cardiovascular fitness. Like there's no question. But a lot of the time, especially when it comes into competition or when you're looking at a sport that you're competing in, really in any in any sport you have to improve the skill of it um and that goes that comes down to absolutely every aspect of, of every sport uh there's always a skill element to it and 
the it does the body does obviously adapts to skill training but that happens when you're sleeping it happens when you're recovering it doesn't just adapt to it the same as a cardiovascular fitness okay so you can get in a bit more skills training at times because that's more of a neurological adaption as well but you still need to pull back on that and recover and andrew huberman talks about this a good bit more uh, he talks about it in a lot of detail uh, where focuses on neuroplasticity and the brain's ability to change and that's when you're picking up new skills but for that to happen you need to focus as intensely as possible to try pick up the skill let's say if it is putting in golf just because i don't really talk about golf i don't play golf but uh just as an example if it's putting that you're trying to improve on well the idea is that you focus as intently as possible for maybe 90 minutes at a time where you're really really just that's all you're doing now you can break it down into 25 minute blocks as well but you have to just completely defocus and you have to step back and take in nothing at all and that's a really really effective way of improving skills and you can do the same thing for kick and freeze in football where you stand out for maybe i wouldn't say 90 minutes of just straight kicking because your legs would be absolutely torn apart but step stepping out kicking really really focusing on every part of the movement and focusing on the end goal and then stepping back giving yourself a chance to recover maybe just lying down closing your eyes and then coming back into it again uh, and that's a huge part of it okay and that's a huge part of, of skills training is that you need to give the body a chance to adapt and recover to that as well okay so it's not just cardiovascular fitness but that's where the idea of cognitive load comes into it as well that's why i mentioned cognitive load and emotional load and not just physical load because those components or those uh, skills use up a lot of cognitive energy okay and for them to be programmed because your body your brain kind of has to it has to rewire basically that's what neuroplasticity is it's, it's rewiring to accommodate or facilitate accommodate probably more so than facilitate a new pattern or a new movement pattern and that's why the best of the best have these movement patterns refined from a young age where they just can do the same movement over and over again and get it right nearly all the time so that's why we have to look at all these other components of load as well and not just look at physical load okay so i hopefully that makes sense to you now um and i won't i won't keep going on about it from there then to jump back to the physical load side of things uh, as we were saying training volume is going to play a huge role and if we look at that footballer who was training on the sunday uh or had a match on the sunday training tuesday training thursday had a match on a, on a saturday you have to look at first the amount of sprinting that he's doing in those sessions and i did a podcast with larkin daily a couple of days ago uh, or a couple of weeks ago even and it was basically about recovery strategies and ga players and what affected that recovery and i definitely said to go back and check that out uh, it was about three or four podcasts before this one but basically one of the main contributors to fatigue was sprint volume or high speed running and the amount of that that they did in the game so monitoring that and keeping an eye on that is huge because if you do a lot of sprinting in a game and then you sprint a lot on a Tuesday and sprint a lot on a Thursday and even another match on a Saturday, you're going to have to take that into account in what you do on a Friday. Now, I would definitely say on a Thursday, you probably do very little, if not like you have very, very little high speed running because you want to give yourself a chance to adapt. Now, it really depends as well how important the match is on a Saturday. If it's a challenge game uh, and you're looking just to really have high load for a couple of weeks before you taper off that's grand there's no problem but you need to be aware of what the risk factors are for that as well or what the risks are for it because you are as i said at a higher risk of injury if you're going to be overly fatigued and sprinting is one of the biggest ones that causes fatigue explosive exercise causes more fatigue it takes longer to recover from is, is the easiest way to look at it okay so how do we help it or how can we manage it a small bit better well i think first off when you're looking at it now this is this is for as i said all sports is you need to plan in advance and this is something that i do with with uh with all of my athletes but with uh, runners especially and ultra runners is that you find that 
they rarely schedule in rest weeks and recovery weeks or deload weeks uh, and they could have races spread out throughout the year and if you look at a lot of their training programs it just keeps climbing and climbing and climbing uh, and unfortunately a lot of ultra runners get a lot of injuries a lot of overuse injuries and a lot of this is just to do with the fact that they don't pull back it, they get into that mindset of let's just keep going and going and going and see what we can do until something happens until something stops them and they have to take that recovery period and I have someone in mind as well when I'm thinking about this in particular and if she's listening I'm sure she has a she's an idea who, who I am uh, who I am thinking about is that we look at structure in every six to eight weeks okay but then every couple of months then you also give yourself another I suppose like a, more of a deload block so maybe it's not a week maybe it's two weeks okay every few months I find that works massively and that you're not completely cutting off everything but you are just pulling back a small bit but you have to plan that in advance now you can do it on the fly that's grand but you'll find that it'll be all over the place because it'll be down to subjective feeling and if you think oh I have a match coming up here so I want to fit this in now even though the body isn't able to handle it and you'd be better off just taking the time to chill out and relax and recover uh, then maybe there's a bit more pressure on the people around you maybe someone that you're training with has been out with injury and they're just back and now they're trying to pick up their own training and you get caught in the cycle of all right well I need to keep up with them or I need to keep training with them while they are back okay well that that's a very 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 clear road to getting an injury all right so you need to manage this yourself uh, you can't now you can obviously you can work with other people as well like this a huge part of what I do is is, is managing a load of people and kind of getting an idea of how their body's reacting but we plan it out I think a very general one is six weeks a six week mark is a perfect time to kind of deload now how you can do this that is if you push for six weeks you can then deload for a week but you can sometimes then push for eight weeks after that and then you can deload for seven days or seven to ten days uh, and see how you're feeling but there's a huge learning component to this and I wouldn't do this with just someone who's fresh off the bat who's just who's who's a new or new into this type of training and they're trying to figure it out I do this with someone who's experienced and I do this with the experienced athletes that I work with is that we look at extending it a small bit more just to get that extra push on the stress side of things so then we can pull back and get the extra bit of adaption as well and it completely depends on their schedule when championship is uh, when their games are what games they need to be there for what games they need to be and trainings that they need to be at so they can actually make the team because there's no point just doing all this rest and recovery and then being sitting on the sideline um, and not being able to perform after you doing all the right stuff and have putting everything in place so there is times that you need to actually push on a small bit there and take it back and that's why it is the so individual uh, which I think is so interesting as well but then what else can you do to to manage it better a huge one is you need to become aware of your signs of fatigue specifically everyone's signs of fatigue are, are different uh, I actually did a podcast called manifestations of fatigue it's one of my it's one of my most listened podcasts and it basically talks about how f- fatigue presents in different people um now it was a good few weeks ago a good few months ago at this stage but how it presents in different people and it's one that if you can get a good idea and good understanding of what your fatigue signs are your signs of fatigue are then you can really decide all right it's time to pull back here maybe i take an extra rest and recovery day uh, in the week or i can push on a small because i'm not that bad okay and this is huge so signs of fatigue are different for everybody as i said some people they could start to get achy and sore and uh, injuries start to flare up some people just get really pissed off um some people dig deep and they kind of they hide it and they don't uh they don't show that they're fatigued and they just they get stuck in this kind of uh, loop of just keep pushing 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 that's another one um uh, i had an interesting one with with one guy uh who was like i know if i i always kind of be humming a tune when i'm doing certain jobs um and if i i know that if i'm not humming that tune that i haven't slept well the night before or i haven't um yeah you know, or I, i've been overtraining the last while so it's getting that specific in some situations about understanding okay well am i fatigued here do i need to pull back or can i just keep going and keep pushing on okay and that's huge if you can figure that that out that's 50 percent of the puzzle in a lot of cases okay standard the next one is is, is is so standard it's making sure that you take recovery days and this is this is crazy because 
and so many people don't do this especially in season it's crazy that they will train monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday they'll have a game sunday or they might not they might not train uh thursday because they'll have ga on on friday um and then they will have a game sunday so on thursday they'll go for like a 15k cycle and on a saturday they might go for a hike or like a, a long hike or they might just go down and do a few runs or they might just get a gym session in now there's no rest and recovery in that i think that taking two days in a row is a huge benefit it stands to a lot of people just taking two days off it can do a lot for the body and it doesn't work for some people's schedules that's i understand that but if there is times in your season that you can get two days off in a row that you don't do too much and you just relax and go for walks um like a hike is grand if you go up like a hill and it's you know 30 minutes or, or an hour going for a four hour hike is not a rest and recovery day it is maybe an emotional release cognitive release maybe but physically it's probably not that much of a release so i think that's a huge part and the other thing i look at is try to plan your recovery days on days that are not that high stress at work okay so i usually try to not put it on a monday because a lot of people find that they sleep poorly on sunday night because they know they have to get up for work on monday morning um so they don't want to miss the alarm and stuff like that so that's why i generally try not to do it on a monday but if it doesn't fit someone's schedule i definitely do a monday and then i'll do another day and i'll get them to fit in like a nap or something like that on, the, on a, another day in the week okay uh, there's loads of different tricks you can use the other thing is monitor your training day so write them down just write down what you did uh, really simply it doesn't have to be like in massive detail it could be trained for um 90 minutes uh, at the pitch um rpe which is rate of proceeded exertion uh, which is basically level how tough you thought it was uh seven out of ten or eight out of ten um and then the next day you can say rest um and then feeling the effects of the day before or whatever just writing monitoring them and writing them down is huge and it really really helps okay and then the last thing is just plan it in cycles so if you as i said if you know that you can you're going to be pushing for championship you kind of want to have an idea that the week before championship you're deloading but you're actually fitting in little recovery periods along that way or along in those couple of weeks before it, so that that deload week is um you can get the best out of it and that it brings you back to 100 percent and not just back to 80 percent because you've drained the battery so much okay so that's i i think there are a couple of ideas a couple of things that you can start to implement a small bit more uh, over the next while um and I hope everyone is training and is going well. I know at home it's 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 in the middle of the summer now. Uh, some of my clients in Australia today, or at this side of the world, or the southern hemisphere, it's uh, into the winter and it's obviously coming back around soon enough. So I think everyone is training, is in a good training state at this stage. Um, but obviously if you're injured, I hope you're doing a bit. But uh, I think that should give you a better idea on what you need to focus on. Uh, I would say if you listen to that whole podcast and you're thinking, where do I go from here? Uh, and you don't really know what to do. Well, first off, you can reach out to me and ask me any questions you have. But I would definitely check out that manifestation of physical fatigue episode because it'll give you a better idea of what your specific uh, markers are for fatigue. And if you have a good idea of those, then you can start to uh, work around that and you'll know when to push and when to pull back and all that after it. So that's definitely one to check out. Uh, but yeah that is everything for me guys and girls today uh, if anyone's out there and you're struggling with an injury and you're kind of looking to get back into training or you want to really push on before for championship comes up and you need to you need a bit more structure uh, a bit more of a plan so that you're working on all the right things uh, just reach out send me an email at mobilitytutor at gmail.com or you can just write to me on instagram at mobility tutor i also have a form on instagram that you can just go straight in there fill it out it'll send it to me and i will get in contact with you so we can set up a call uh, because if we at least jump on a call we can talk through what issues you're having what your goals are uh, and then we can start to make out a bit of a basic plan uh, and then after that then we can go into a good bit more detail now uh, once you think it's a if you think it's the right uh, idea for you or the right plan for you okay so that is all for me i would love if you could post this on your story 
that would really really help uh, it just helps promote the podcast helps me get uh more uh, yeah promotion in but in a way i can also get better guests then because you'd be surprised when you're reaching out to guests to get them on the podcast you have to have a certain amount of listeners and all this so uh posting on the story helps me get better guests um i would really appreciate if you could do that uh, and then outside of that i'd love if you could rate it on spotify and if you could rate it on itunes as well as subscribe um as i said at start if you're on tiktok follow me on tiktok at mobility shooter or at mobility shooter um and that is all oh and youtube i've started youtube again properly this time so check me out on that as well mobility shooter yeah guys that's everything for me hope everyone is doing well and i will chat to you all again soon have a good one